The title of my lesson is, It Begins and Ends with Love. 1 John contains one of the most startling claims in all of Scripture, but it is one that we have heard so often that perhaps its boldness is lost on us. We have to keep in mind that the name of God was so precious to the Jews that they would not speak it. God's image was so precious and vast that it was not to be depicted in graven images. When God is spoken of throughout the pages of the Bible, it is most often done in metaphor. The writers of Scripture were far more comfortable talking about what God is like than saying with certainty who God is. But here, in 1 John 4, that carefulness and hesitation is thrown aside and God right, or John writes, excuse me, God is love. God is love. And because we have made in God's image, we are to love God and to love our brothers and sisters. God is love. Three words. Apart from this truth, we have no hope at all. Without God, there is no love because love begins with God. Love begins with God and love comes from God. While we were sinners, still, God sent Jesus to save us because God loves us. God is central to who God is. And this love, as people created in the image of God, it has been central to who we are also. In fact, verse 8 reads, Whomever does not Love does not know God, for God is love. Do you love? Sometimes I wonder if radical statements like God is love have lost their depth and power when we hear them because we are constantly bombarded with weak concepts of love. We talk about loving certain kinds of food or loving a television show or loving sports. We equate love with something that makes us happy or something that makes us feel a certain way. But love extends far beyond that. Love is unexpected. It often comes to us the exact opposite of what we thought we'd get. Love is unafraid. It knows that when all is said and done, the one who will stand before this one who loves us. Love wins. Even in the face of struggle and adversity, love will win in the end. Love is unexpected. Throughout the pages of the Old Testament, we find the cultural idea that bad people get bad things and good people get good things. Take example the book of Job. When suffering befalls Job, his friends jump to the conclusion that well, he must have done something terrible to deserve it. We all know that things do not always work out this way. Sometimes people who do terrible things seem to get away with it or even prosper and have all kinds of wonderful opportunities fall into their laps. On the flip side, we have watched wonderful people suffer in ways that they never could have deserved. That just doesn't seem fair. The amazing thing about God's love is that while we were still sinners, God loved us. While we were completely and utterly undeserving, God sent Jesus to save us. When the wage of sin would have been death, God issued forth a plan for life. When our separation from God should have destroyed us, God found a way to redeem. God has already given. Love truly is unexpected. Love is patient. When we are probably expecting impatience or anger, love is kind of unkind world. Love does not 
envy or boast, but celebrate with others. Love is not selfish and demanding, but other-centered and giving. Love believes when belief seems crazy. Love hopes when all seems hopeless. Love is unexpected, but love is what endures. So often, we read the list of what love is in 1 Corinthians 13, and we read it as though it was intended to be some type of marital to-do list. But love comes from God. 1 Corinthians 13 gives us a window into what godly love looks like. Love begins with God. And that people created in God's image, we love. Because God loves. The Lord tells Philip in the book of Acts to go down towards the road that runs from Jerusalem to Gaza. This was a wilderness road. Most people in that time would be hesitant to set out towards a wilderness road. But Philip goes, and while he's there, he encounters an Ethiopian eunuch. The fact that this fellow is a eunuch would have made him unable to convert to Judaism. Yet, the eunuch is still headed to Jerusalem to worship. He is still reading from the prophet Isaiah. He is still longing to know and understand. Philip goes with him and answers his questions by teaching about Jesus. And the eunuch asked to be baptized in the nearest water available in a baptism that wasn't scripted or planned. Philip baptized someone who had previously been kept at a distance from religious faith. God's love is unexpected. It is given to us while we do not deserve it. It includes those we might least expect. Sometimes it comes about through unconventional means. Love is unexpected. Love is also unafraid. I'm not saying that we're never going to have fear. After living through a tornado, I'm pretty sure I'll consider to feel shivers of fear from time to time when the sky turns ominous. When John writes, perfect love casts out fear, He isn't saying we will never be afraid again of anything. We have to back up and read the rest of the verse right before it. Love has been perfected among us in this way, that we may have boldness on the day of judgment, because as he is, so are we in this world. There is no fear to love, But perfect, love casts out fear, for fear has to do with punishment. And whoever fears has not reached perfection in love. We do not have to be afraid of God because God is love. God's holiness, God's perfection, and all of God's vast and infinite attributes have to be held together with God's perfect love. In John Wesley's notes on the Bible, he wrote this on the verse, God is love. This little sentence brought John more sweetness, even in the times when he was writing it, than the whole world can bring. God is often styled holy, righteous, wise, but not holiness and righteousness or wisdom. In the abstract, as he is said to be love, imitating that this is his darling, his reigning attribute, the attribute that sheds an amicable glory to all his other perfections. Love is the beginning point in the story of salvation, and it begins with God. It doesn't hinge on perfection, because if it did, God would never have made a way for us in the first place. 
God is love. And even though God's love is unexpected and sometimes we didn't earn, God gives it to us abundantly. When we live in the faithfulness of the love that God has shown us, we won't be afraid of judgment because we know that the judgment is the one who made the first move in showing love to us while we were still mired in sin. Love is unexpected. Love is unafraid. And love wins. In other words, it begins with love and it ends with love. This is the best news there could ever be, even though something, sometimes it seems like a dream too good to be true. We can't miss the struggle and the brokenness of the world. We can't miss the injustice, the hatred and the suffering. Even though we know that love will overcome, even though we know that love will win in the end, sometimes we despair. Sometimes we wonder if this is a good thing. Is this as good as it gets? We feel afraid. When the hatred seems the strongest, when the cost seems too high, when it seems impossible for love to win, in the end, love will triumph. In 1964, Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was awarded the Nobel Peace Prize. He accepted the award at the time in history when the struggle was still very real, when peace seemed impossible, when injustice and freedom and equity seemed like a mere pipe dream. He accepted the award at the time in history that is not much different than the world we face today with COVID-19, with systematic poverty and injustices, a time in which we hear the assurance from God that love will overcome while we find it hard to believe. As Reverend King accepted his Nobel Prize, he acknowledged that peace had not fully come. He acknowledged that the struggle was still real and powerful and present. He also said this, I believe that unarmed truth and unconditional love will have the final world word in reality. This is why right temporarily defeated is stronger than evil triumphant. I believe that even among today's martyr as today's mortars burst and whining bullets there is still hope for a bright tomorrow. Even though it is a messy system, God calls us up to carry the love of God with us everywhere we go. Even though we are miserably imperfect at sharing God's love, as people made in God's image, we participate in the love of God by loving others. As it reads in today's verse 19, we love because he loved us. The love of God is unexpected. It chooses the strange, the outcast, the imperfect and broken. The love of God is unafraid. We can stand with boldness on the judgment day because the judge, the one who made the first move to show us love, the love of God wins. God's love began it all, and God's love will see it through completion. Please pray with me. Oh, loving God, I'm far from perfect. Many parts of my character could be more pure, and things aren't always how I want them to be. One thing I know for sure, one thing I trust in and count on with all my heart is the power of your love. So fill me, O oh Lord, with your grace and loving spirit. The best answer 
to all my problems and imperfections is more of you. Pour yourself over me, O Lord. Cleanse and restore me. I ask for more of Christ in me to cast out the darkness, fear, hurt, and shame. Your love of me is infinite and all-powerful. I am a child of God. My lips sing praises to your glory. In Christ, my soul soars free. In Jesus' name, amen. Your financial support of our church remains as important today as ever. You can mail your offerings to Tracy United Methodist Church at 162 Morgan Street, Tracy, Minnesota, 56175. You can also call our church office most weekday afternoons at 507 629 Four five seven six, and we will assist you with arranging direct giving through your bank. Or you could contact your bank directly and make the arrangements there. God is love. Fear not judgment day punishment for Jesus' love is our redemption and can save us all. Thank you for joining us in worship this week. Please, Join me here in virtual worship or through our in-person worship next week as we celebrate Mother's Day. I will be talking about being God's kids. Following the benediction, I invite you to join in our sending song. It is the hymn, Glorify Thy Name. Now, hear the benediction. Go now and love one another, because love is from God. Proclaim God's salvation in every generation. May the Holy Spirit cast out all fear and fill you with God's love. We go in peace and love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ, amen.